This week, Bevy has upgraded to Rust 2024 and made Transform Propagation Parallel, improving performance significantly. The AsBind Group macro gained a new data attribute, which continues bindless support, and Ship Happens and ChessMated got playable web demos. Speaking of web demos, the web slinging functionality that we saw in previous issues over the last couple weeks got its own interactive devlog. Bevy's no standard support continues on with a few PRs this week, which as a whole keeps no standard support rolling forward. And Bevy has a number of workflows and tools that run on PRs and merges. As of 18.064, which you can see on the left here, when rendering output changes for, say, an example, a new workflow adds a comment to the PR indicating this. This comment, as seen here on the right, includes a link to be able to review the output and determine whether it's a deliberate rendering change or not. Tooling like this really keeps open source projects rolling smoothly, so it's really wonderful to see investment in this area. And in 17.4.23, five new methods were added to the Bevy remote protocol for operating on resources. This includes getting, inserting, removing, mutating, and listing resources. It's been really exciting to see BRP land and then proceed to get new features that are really useful over the course of the 0.16 development cycle. Next up, we've got the GLTF loading refactor. The GLTF loader used to live in this 2000 plus, actually like 2600 line file. Now it's been refactored into a number of different area specific files in 15994, which should make it easier to dig into, understand, and maintain. This kind of refactor is tough to get in in a fast moving project, because as you can imagine, 2,500 lines of code both garners opinions from everybody and has to deal with everything else merging into main all the time. So if you're interested in learning how the GLTF loading works, now's a great time to dig in. And then we've got 17879, which makes it so that the color material that can be applied to a mesh 2D allows the configuration of a transform that will warp the UV space the shader uses. This enables the scaling of the UV space and is especially useful when combined with an image sampler that repeats. The top line feature is, of course, configurable repeating textures in your 2D apps. And of course, we've got Alice's Merge Train, which is a maintainer level view into active PRs and how the bevy sausage is made. We've got the link to that on the website, which will take you over to Mastodon. And first up in the showcases this week, we've got Chess Mated. Chess Mated is, of course, a chess implementation in bevy, complete with move tracking, as you can see on the left. Now, I'm not a very strong chess player, so somebody else will have to tell me if this has all of the moves that you can play on a chessboard. And then we've got Connect4, which is a Connect4 implementation, which makes this author's first bevy game. The source, as you can see here, is available on GitHub. And then we've got this procedural galaxy map, which supports zooming and panning. The distance from the center is random, and an angle is based on a logarithmic spiral with noise sprinkled in. Next up, we've got some dungeons and caves. This is rendering dungeon and cave maps loading from the network. A custom shader is used for the floor, and tokens are animated using Blender and outlined using Bevy Mod Outline. And this is an early look at Computronium. Computronium is an automation game like Factorio or Satisfactory with an emphasis on computer hardware and networks. Build data centers, manufacture integrated circuits, and deal with threats to your network. And this is the rewrite of a prototype game called Quantsum. The game has migrated to using Lightyear and has reached a milestone of being smooth at 100 millisecond ping time. The code for this one is available over on GitHub. Next up, we've got a BevyPunk demo, which I will always enjoy seeing. These are main menu effects in BevyPunk, which is a recreation of the cyberpunk UI inside of Bevy. This uses a crate or is based on a crate that we'll see later in the issue as well. And then we've got this hexagonal grid, which is a replication of Catlike Coding's hexagonal grid system, which is a series of tutorials for, well, building something like this. Bridges between the hexagons are also generated. And then the procedural dungeon we've seen come together over the past few issues got its stairs. The stairs in this case are generated via parametric curves. And from 3D back to 2D, to build a home has transitioned to using Bevy Picking, which is Bevy's upstream to picking implementation based on Bevy Mod Picking. The game is getting closer and closer to the point at which it can be played by others. And then there's Ephemeris Explorer, which is a simulator of solar systems and spacecraft flight planning tool simulating n-body physics. A number of flight planning and event simulations are displayed in the accompanying video, so definitely go check it out if this kind of thing interests you. And here's a demo of Bevy Inoki, specifically these flame particles on the right. Bevy Inoki is a CPU-based particle system. Our next showcase is going to be a little bit brighter, and that is this music visualizer, which the author claims to have attempted to do. It seems like they really completed it here, and it's complete with avian physics integration for the bouncing spheres. And Betty Baby is a desktop mascot application similar to Desktop Me, where you can spawn characters in on your desktop, it's using a transparent window to show them, and the source is available on GitHub for this one. 
and space games seem to be all the rage these days, this is launching rockets. This demo shows building rockets using a custom reactivity-like framework that generates a VDOM-style tree with diffs. Any modifications to the rocket component will automatically trigger updates to the hierarchy, guaranteeing that the hierarchy always stays in sync with the Source of Truth component. And the way they're building rockets here really reminds me of Kerbal Space Program, which I've uh, <laughs> invested, we'll say, a couple hours into. <laughs> and here's an early peek at an in-progress Wild West roguelike. All we have right now is this image, so we'll have to look for more in the future. Uh, the next showcase also gets a little bit brighter. This is Ship Happens, which is a new game jam game made with Avian 2D as well as Bevy, of course. In this Tetris-like stacking game, an unstable boat rocks back and forth as containers and animals rain down from above. And this is an example of hot reloadable Bevy vector shapes. This is using Bevy vector shapes as assets with a bit of scripting support thrown in, as you can see on the right here. And then we've got FMC.GG. FMC is a self-described platform for creating Minecraft-style games. The goal is to create something like MindTest, where the entire game is defined server-side, allowing for a large range of games. And first up in the crate releases, we've got Bevy Mod Scripting 0.9.9. Bevy Mod Scripting represents an initial attempt to enable scripting within Bevy's existing framework. In 0.9.9, it's now possible to query schedules, systems, and inject new event handlers from scripts themselves, which, while I don't use the crate, sounds pretty substantial to me. And then we've got Bevy Lunex 0.3. Bevy Lunex is a retained layout engine for Bevy entities built around vanilla Bevy ECS. It gives you the ability to make your own custom UI using regular ECS like every part of your app. 0.3 is a complete rewrite of the project, migrating to use Bevy's hierarchy observers, overhauled state machines, a Lunex picking backend, and more. Bevy Lunex powers Bevy Punk, which can be viewed on the web, but is not meant to be a web demo. You can find the demo on itch.io, but for the expected experience performance-wise, compile and run the native application. And then we've got Shadybug. Shadybug is a software renderer for debugging shaders. That means it doesn't use the GPU. It isn't strictly speaking a Bevy crate, but it was created to debug Bevy applications. And then we've got ISPerfUI 0.4. ISPerfUI is a convenient debug overlay you can add to your Bevy app to show diagnostics, performance metrics, and other information via Bevy UI. 0.4 brings Bevy 0.15 support and new entries to show render CPU and GPU time, as well as some fixes and a simplified API for custom entries. And that's it for this week in Bevy this week. As always, we have all the merge pull requests up on the website if you want to go take a look at them. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one.